This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we're going to show you how to make a buttercream daffodil. We're going to cover making your colors, the bags and tips that we've used, the techniques for the different parts of flowers, how you're going to use them to build your blossoms, then we're going to practice it on a nail, and finally on a cupcake. The video is going to be broken into segments so you can easily rewatch or skip ahead as desired. So we're going to get started mixing our colors and we're going to use four food coloring shades. They're all liquid gels. We're going to use sunset orange, lemon yellow, buckeye brown, and royal blue. I'm going to start by making my yellow and I just have a little bit of each squeezed out onto a tray and I'm just going to start I'm just going to go with a tiny bit of yellow here kind of looking to make medium to pastel tones they're just a tiny bit muted so I'm just going to add a tiny bit of that brown we'll give it a mix and see how it looks so I want a nice kind of buttery yellow shade it's just a little bit muted That's looking beautiful and just a little bit darker. that's going to be wonderful. It's a nice kind of mm, maybe light medium tone. It's just on the verge of being a pastel but not quite. It's got that little bit of brown in it just to dull it just a little bit and give us a nice kind of muted shade. So we'll put that aside and make our next color. Our next shade is going to be our orange. So I've got a little bit of buttercream in the bowl, just a couple bounces. I'm going to start with just a few specks of that orange just like we did with our yellow. Give it a tiny bit of yellow, so one or two of those, and just a couple of tiny ones of that brown. And that should give us a similar kind of value. We maybe want to go a little more intense with the orange color, just because a lot of times that center trumpet has a bit more intensity to it. So I like where this is going. I'm just going to bump it up a tiny bit. looking great. It looks good next to our yellow. Just go a little more intense. And I think we should be in a nice spot. That's going to be fantastic. So we'll put this aside and make our green. So I've got just a little bit in my bowl for my green. We're only going to make a tiny bit. It's just going to be for little stamens inside that trumpet to help support it. So I'm going to go more yellow. Just a teeny tiny little bit of blue and also a tiny bit of that brown. I'm just putting a little bit of that brown in each color that I make. And I want this green to be more yellow than blue, so I'm starting with very little blue because it'll be easy to add more and just a touch of that brown. So it's definitely reading yellow right now. So I'm just going with another little hint of blue. And a little bit of brown. I'm 
and it's funny, so it can easily get too much on the blue. If that happens to you, a shade goes too far in one direction, just to add a little bit of that other color. This will bring it back towards the yellow. Also add just a little more intensity. I don't want it to be too dark because I don't want it to really stand out. I just want it to have that little pop of another color inside the center of those flowers. And I think that's gonna be perfect. It's a nice kind of muted citrusy green color that's gonna look great inside that orange. So for this flower, our daffodil, we're gonna use four bags and we've got them loaded up with our colors. Our yellow is in a bag with a 104 tip. We're gonna use this to make the outside flat petals. We've got some orange in a bag with our 125 tip. So it's a larger, fatter petal tip that we're gonna to use to make that trumpet center. We've got just a little bit in a bag. You can use either a number one or number two. So it's just a round tip. Oh, sorry, out of focus. There we go. It's a round tip, so just something plain and small. So either one or two, whatever you've got on hand. And we're gonna use this to make the little squiggly ruffles, that kind of beautiful, um, just squiggly little pattern. I don't even know what to call it. A ruffled edge that's on the top of that little trumpet in the center of the flower. And finally, we have our green in a bag with a number three tip. So it's another round tip. There we go. So we've got that great, nice number three on there. It's a little bit bigger. We're gonna use it to make a little mound and then pipe some spikes on top of it for some stamens, but it's also gonna help support that trumpet. So our bags are loaded up and we're ready to go. So let's talk about the techniques that we're gonna to use to make our daffodils. And we're gonna start with those yellow flat petals that make up the bottom of the flower. And for these petals, we're going to hold our bag opening right on that nail so that the fat end is towards the center of the nail. Imagine this is a big circle there. And we're basically gonna slide that fat end up, give it a little bit of a turn and then come back. But instead of doing the natural motion that we do for a normal petal that would give us that kind of rounded teardrop shape, we're going to line it up right so that that opening is almost on a 45 degree angle. And as we pull out, we're going to go a little bit, right? And then kind of angle back, twist, right? So that we reorient our bag, come back down and towards that center. And this is gonna give us a diamond shaped petal. And it's a little easier to just show you than it is to say it. But basically what I'm doing is I'm maintaining that same motion with the inside part of the tip that I normally would where I'm sliding it out, turning just a little bit with the nail and then pulling back. And then I'm trying my best with that outside edge to follow a diamond pattern with that skinny end. And I'm gonna hold my bag in that kind of lay flat position so that these petals are really flat against the nail. And I'm just gonna have that skinny edge just a little off the surface so they're just ever so slightly cupped, they have a little bit of volume to them. And that might have just sounded like gobbledygook. It'll probably make much more sense when we actually transfer over to our nail and go do it. But I just wanna kind of warm you up rather than our normal kind of um, teardrop shaped petal that we would do on a nail like this, we're gonna go for kind of a diamond shape to get the shape of those petals on the bottom of the daffodil. So the other things that we're gonna do after we make our petals, we're going to do a little mound with some spikes. So we're gonna use our green with our number three tip. And we're gonna hold it up off the surface, pipe a nice dot to get a mound there in the center of our flower. And then we're just gonna do some little spikes on top of it. So nothing too crazy, just as many as you can. The important thing here with this, because it's gonna make the center of our flower and help give it some stability, is it should be about the height or just a little shorter than the opening of your 125 tip, because that takes us to our trumpet. Right, so that's gonna be that nice kind of fluted trumpet shaped part of that flower. And we're gonna take our 125 tip, so our big one right there, and we're gonna hold it basically straight up and down. And we're gonna pipe this right around the center that we've made. So it's gonna give you a nice spot, right, to line up next to, 
and you're just gonna spin your nail slowly while piping and you're just gonna jiggle it just nice little soft motion up and down and that's gonna give it that fluted kind of ruffled frilly kind of wavy feeling to the little trumpet because they usually have that kind of little um, I don't know pleated texture to them and so that's gonna give us a nice little more natural feel to that if we just jiggle it up and down a little bit it's too complicated to start just do a straight spin it'll still look really nice and then finally we're going to finish it with some ruffles on the top right since they always have that nice beautiful ruffly edge and we're just going to do a little zigzag line so you can basically just start a line and just go up and down just a nice zigzag motion and that's gonna give you that ruffle. It'll lay right on top of that top edge that we're gonna make with our 125 tip. So those are the other little techniques that we're gonna use. This one, the trumpet, I have to demo that on the flower nail because I need that spinning action. So we'll get to that in just a little bit. So now that we've talked about the different parts that we're gonna use, let's talk about how we're gonna pull them together. So building our blossoms. The first thing we're going to do is grab our yellow bag with our 104 tip. We're going to do five to six flat petals. I can usually fit six on there. And the key with these to making them look nice and natural is we're going to do three. So think about dividing that flower nail into thirds, doing three equally spaced petals. And then we're going to go back and in the space in between them, pipe a second set of three petals. And these should and probably will slightly overlap the first three. So you'll get that look of kind of like two layers of petals that are unfolding on top of each other. And we're gonna to remember to draw that diamond shape with the outside edge of the tip to get those nice kind of characteristic shaped petals that you find on a daffodil. The second step is then in the middle of that area, right in the center, we're gonna pipe that little ball with our green, give it some cute little spikes, I usually get maybe three, four, five at the most in there. It's a slightly bigger tip, so don't worry about a lot. We just want that little hint of green in the center and something to help support that trumpet. So the next thing we're gonna do then is take our 125 tip and we're going to just spin around the outside of that. So the fat end is gonna be right there, nestled against that mound and touching those petals. And we're just gonna spin in a nice slow circle to get that trumpet. And we'll finish it off by doing that zigzag line on the top. And that's gonna give us that lovely little ruffle look on the top edge of those petals. So all together, that gives us a lovely little daffodil. We're gonna pipe these on our flower nail next. So we're gonna start our daffodil by piping those bottom yellow petals. And you can see I'm gonna work on a piece of parchment paper on my nail. And I've actually drawn essentially a little peace sign, the middle of one anyways, on my parchment paper. So kind of dividing that space into thirds. This is gonna make a nice little guide for me. And if you're having trouble getting those divisions down, and making things equally spaced, this is a good little way to get yourself a nice little visual cue while working. And I've done it in Sharpie so that when I flip over, I can still see it there, right? It's easy to see it through. You can really make yourself nice little guides for while you're working. And I'm gonna line up, right? That end is gonna slide along that line, so I'm gonna make my petal around it. And the bag is in that lay flat position. The center is on the surface. The outside edge of that tip, the skinny end is really up off it. And I'm just gonna go nice and slow, right? Create that diamond shape, right? And just turn as you need to, right? And then pull back towards the center. So that gives you a nice diamond shaped petal. And I'm gonna do three more of those. I just got a little gap there in the center. And you'll see that it's gonna give me a nice little space in between each one to do that second set of petals. Beautiful, so I've got my first three down. I'm gonna do the second set right on top of it. The edges are gonna kind of overlap just a little bit. So I'm gonna start drawing that second round of petals on top of the first ones. I just wanna try and keep that nice
diamond shape to them. Fantastic. So you can see from the side, it gives it a little height. The um, petals kind of look like they're unfurling in layers. Some are underneath, some are on top. That's exactly what we're going for. We're going to switch over to our number three tip. And we're going to hold that bag straight up and down in relation to the surface of the uh, flower nail and the petals that we've already made. We're going to just be right up off the surface, pipe a nice dot for ourselves to make that center. Beautiful. And then we're just going to gently pull up as we go. Right, so pipe and pull up, and that's going to give us those little spikes. So it usually just takes three or four, and we want to make them about the height of the opening of that 125 tip. So don't make them too tall because we want them to kind of be down inside that little trumpet. And once we've got that ready, we're going to switch over to our bag with our 125. We're going to be holding this one so that it's kind of at a 45 degree angle. That's going to allow us to get in there right next to the mound and against those petals with the bottom fat edge. And you can see the back of the bag is lined up with my right shoulder because I'm a righty. If you're a lefty, just go the opposite way and go towards your left shoulder. And I'm just going to start right here kind of against the back edge of that mound. And I'm just going to wriggle up and down, gentle pressure, slowly go around right? And that's going to give me just a little bit of that kind of um, ruffled, wavy look to it. So you can see that gives us a little bit of almost a pleated look to that pattern. And it gives us a nice little trumpet. You can just see those little stamens on the inside. And then we're going to go along the top edge of this. So just really gentle, Try not to bump into it. Try not to uh, disturb too much that top edge, but we're just gonna do a cute little zigzag line. So just really delicate, really fine, subtle motion right there on the top. Just spin as you go. You'll notice I'm holding my bag almost straight up and down in a single position and just working around that top edge until I can finish it. You can see that gives us a nice little ruffle to the top edge of our trumpet and we have a beautiful daffodil. So now that we've practiced this on our flower nail, we're going to go ahead and give it a try on our cupcakes. So we're going to give our daffodil a try on a cupcake and I'm just going to start with my cupcake here. If you have problems with dividing up your space, just mark right three little lines on there just to give yourself a little kind of visual to help judge the spacing on those petals, right? Because if we get our first three in a good spot with good spacing between them, it's going to look nice in the end. And you can make those petals bigger and take up the whole surface of the cupcake, or you can make them smaller and pipe some details around the edge. That's up to you and what you feel comfortable with. Okay, so we're just going to give this a try and we're going to go same way, flat against the surface, draw out, to a point, spin a little bit, and then start pulling back. And you can see I'm just drawing that diamond shape with my tip as I go. Go towards my next one, spin, pull back, and again towards the center. a little harder to spin a cupcake than it is your flower nail. So if you have a little trouble with this, don't be mean to yourself. It is definitely harder. And then we're going to do our second set of petals just right there on top and in between the first ones. gorgeous. You can see nice light covering of frosting on our cupcake. And then we'll just repeat what we did, right? Number three tip, nice mound, right? Right there in the center, just to give that little trumpet some support. And we'll do some little spikes on top 
and just do as many as you need to just to cover the top surface of that dot. For me, it's usually about three or four. And then we'll switch over to our 125 tip. And remember, we're gonna hold this one instead of in a lay flat position. We're gonna be at a 45 degree angle. That opening of the tip is straight up and down, fat end is down, and we're just gonna nest it right next to that little mound and just wiggle. Give it a little squiggle as we turn and go all the way around, right? So just nice and slow. This is one of those things where slow and steady wins the race, right? And just kind of go till you eclipse the start. And sometimes it needs just a little flick to get around that first edge, right? And cover it up and make it look nice and pretty. And then I'm going to take my bag with my little number two tip on it and I'm just going to go all the way around that top edge. Just do that nice little zigzag to give us a little ruffle to that trumpet. And there we have a beautiful daffodil. You can see I did a nice little size. It almost covers the top surface of the cupcake. You could pre-ice them with a little flat icing or take something like a 352 tip or another one of your leaf tips and just do some quick leaves to cover any exposed surface there. But you have a beautiful way to top cupcakes. It doesn't really take a ton of frosting either. So it's a nice way to practice those daffodils and practice your piping and make some beautiful flowers, whether they're for spring, summer, or fall. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.